Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to move a WordPress website from one server to another. So we're going to have two Plesk servers, and server A is not so good anymore, server B is the one that's going to take over the responsibility for that website. And as an added challenge, my source server is an Amazon EC2 instance. Let's see how we do that. Today we're moving a WordPress website from one server to another and we're going to use Plesk 11.5 for that. I recently had to do this and I thought this is an ideal idea to turn it into a screencast and let you guys know how this works. So let me quickly iterate what the problem is here. We have a WordPress website which is currently hosted on server A and that's kind of worked out but server A is flawed and more to the point it's a very expensive server so I'd like to move my website to server B which hopefully will cope with the same load of traffic a little bit cheaper. Now the problem here is that my source server is an Amazon EC2 instance and that means that's not a bad thing but that means I don't have password root access to the server. So since I'm using Plesk 11, I would traditionally use the Plesk Migration Manager, but sadly I can't because the Plesk Migration Manager requires me to give the destination server root access with the password. That's a bit of a problem. So the only solution that I have or that I could think of is to recreate that website and copy all the data to the destination server. Sure, you're probably going to say, well, why don't you just make the Amazon EC2 instance capable of be logged in as root with a password and believe me I've tried I've squandered many many hours on this subject and sadly I can't make it work so I'm just going to recreate that website and copy all the data across so how do we do this? First of all, we're going to use a completely web-based workflow. So there's no FTP clients, no password hunting, and no external anything. Use your favorite web browser and it's all cross-platform and it's going to be much faster than using FTP clients as well. The way this works is we're going to zip up all the files with the Plesk file manager on the source server and download them. When I say all, I mean all except for the WP config file, of course, because that will be provided by the destination server. So we're going to zip up everything except for WP config. And then we're going to use the PHP My Admin tool and export the database. Once we've done that, we go over to the destination server on which we're going to set up a new WordPress instance upload and extract all the files from the source server, which will override existing files, but not the wp-config file, so our WordPress instance will still work. And then we're going to import the database, and if we've done everything right, then there's no further tweakage needed because we're going to recreate the WordPress instance just like it was on the source server. And last but not least, we need to obviously switch our domain over to the new IP address because the new server obviously has a new IP address. We're not going to go through that in this tutorial, but we're going to go through everything that you need to do within Plesk. Okay, let's do this thing. Right then, here's my web browser, and I've got one source server, which is this one here, AWS instance, and in another tab I have my destination server, which is called Titan. So they're both running Plesk 11.5. I'm going to log into the source server, and extract all the data that I need. Under subscriptions, I will find my domain. It's going to be pleskbook.com. And in here, I'm going to find the file manager. This is the abbreviated filtered directory already, so all my web files are in HTTP docs. We're starting with the files, by the way, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention it. And in here, I'm going to tick this box, which means I'm going to zip up everything. I don't really need blogs, CGI bin, or temp. They may or may not be there in your directory. But all this is WordPress. So WP admin content includes my .hd access file and everything. And here's the one exception that I must untick absolutely. It's the WP config file. So sample we can leave. That's cool. That's just for that's an example file provided by WordPress, but wp-config must be unchecked, very important. So everything that's ticked, I can now zip up in a directory like I would do perhaps on Linux or with, uh, with WinZip or something like that. And the way I do this is I go over here to More and say Add to Archive. And this is an amazing feature, I think. You do this and you give it a title. I'm going to give it my domain name and today's date and then hit OK. 
Plesk will do the rest and create a zip file. Shouldn't be very big. And here it is, 20 megabytes, not bad. To download it, you just hover over that file and click that little tick box here and hit download. And this is gonna put it into your downloads directory. There it is, working on it. Now that that's done, let's worry about the database. So we go over to the Websites and Domains tab here, and in it we find Databases. I only have one database installed, which Plesk tells me is used by an installed web app, so that's WordPress in my case. And here's the username, and this is the database name here. You may have more databases, so you must find out which is the correct one to export. The easiest way to inspect that is to look at your WP config file of your active installation and that will tell you what that is. So I already know this is the one. I'm gonna hit the web admin tab, which will open a new tab in my browser and open PHP my admin for me. And here it is, this is my WordPress installation. Okay, I'm gonna head over to the export tab and I wanna use custom. And here I can select all the tables in the database. I want to use everything. Down here I want to use compression, perhaps gzipped, always nice. And the only other thing down here under object creation options is I want to add the drop table statement to it. So that means that if I go and import this on my destination server, then tables with the same name will be dropped automatically. I don't have to do that manually. So that'll help me out. Hit go, and phpMyAdmin will read out the database and zip it all up into one handy file, which in this case is WordPress asql.gz. Perfect, that's the source server done. Let's close this and go over to the destination server. And right now, this server doesn't know about a subscription by that title, so I'm gonna to have to set up a brand new subscription. But there's no problem, I'll do that under subscriptions. generate a new password, and if you like, make a note of it. Otherwise, just come back later, pick a service plan, and set up the subscription. Notice, by the way, that when you bring in a website like this, email accounts, of course, will not be transferred because you don't have access to the migration manager. So you're gonna have to deal with that manually as well. But right now, we're only worried about the WordPress website and no email accounts. Okay, there we go. Open in control panel, if you're the administrator. And here's our brand new subscription. So now we're doing the reverse of what we just did. We head over to the Files tab here, and into HTTP Docs, which is where all our web files live. And you'll see some pre-populated files here. I don't really need any of them. So I'm gonna tick that box over here and hit Remove. So this will now remove everything that's in my HTTP Docs directory. Now that we've cleared up the directory, let's head over to Applications and set up a brand new WordPress instance on our new server. WordPress usually hides under the Featured Applications tab here. If it doesn't do that, just go and uh, look for all available applications and search for it. But usually it comes up here, together with Drupal and Joomla. I'm not going to use the one-click installer. I'm going to take that drop-down and hit the Custom installer. Agree to the terms and conditions, which I've read and memorized many times. And I'm gonna specify the installation path for WordPress. It's not gonna be forward slash WordPress. It's gonna be nothing because I'm installing my WordPress files in the root directory. It's also not gonna be admin. That's a really, really bad idea because an admin user for WordPress, that is hackable. So it's always a good idea to not use that. I'm gonna use a different user. and a very secret password. And I'm also gonna open the show all settings dialog down here. And the important thing here is that you can specify what your database name and database username look like. So you can also specify what the site name is. I'm just gonna say this is pleskbook.com. This is for a book about Plesk I'm writing, by the way. Writing is a bit heavy going, but uh, I'll, I'll Hope it's gonna pick up soon. The database name is by default something like WordPress underscore eight, but I would like to be able to remember what that is. So I'm gonna say Plesk book because that's my project. And the database username is also gonna be 
Plesk book. Notice that I'm not putting anything into prefix of tables. You'd imagine that is something like WP underscore. That would be the default. But Plesk 11.5 thinks a little bit differently. That If you put nothing in it, then it will automatically use WP underscore. If you would put anything in here, it will prefix WP underscore with your prefix. So I could put test underscore, and then my table names would be called test underscore WP underscore. One of those tricky things to be aware of. So I'm not going to put anything in here and hit install. Cool, that's all done. Now let's worry about the files. Head over to the files tab and you'll see a long list of files that Plesk has now copied. So those are fresh WordPress files. We're going to leave all of them in there. There is something that happens due to the APS installation. There is a blogs directory and a TMP directory. They are empty and I believe they're only used so that the APS package can write all the files properly. I'm going to choose to remove it those two directories because they're, they're not really necessary for anything. I'm also going to choose to upload some files, which are the files that I've just extracted from my source server. So pleskbook.zip, that's the one. And let Plesk upload that for a second. 100% completed, that's good news. So now we can find our file here, just like we left it. And if I tick that little box here again, I can choose to extract all the files. A little dialog box pops up and it asks me, would you like to replace any existing files? And yes, absolutely. I want to overwrite everything that's in there because I'm bringing my own. This literally only takes two seconds and then all the files are replaced. Notice that also the user and group permissions are still as they were before. So that's good. We don't have any problems there. And we can go ahead and delete that file now because we don't need it anymore. Great, I've brought in all my WordPress files from my old installation to my brand new server. So that's all good. Let's do the same with the database. So to do that, we go over back to websites and domains. Head over to databases. And we should only really have one. There we go, admin Plesk book. That's the one that I've installed, user Plesk book, perfect. Do the same thing as we did before. Head over to web admin. A new tab opens with PHP my admin in it. And it shows me all the tables. Here, instead of the export tab, we're gonna choose the import tab. And we're gonna choose a file which is the one that's been read out for us, which is this one, SQL file. Mine is really small here, 92 kilobytes, but you may run into databases that are several megabytes in size and they may exceed your upload limit. So in that case, you may have to either increase that upload limit on your server, or you have to employ other tools such as SQL Pro that will allow you to import databases remotely. Nothing happens and hit go. Because I've chosen to drop all the tables that may exist, phpMyAdmin has done all that for me and did not give me an error message. If I had done that without the drop statement on export, then I would get error messages pertaining to the fact that I already have tables like that. And if you're in an unlucky position that you did that, just uh, drop all the tables manually from the, from the destination server and then import. Okay, we can close PHP my admin. And all we need to do now really for eternal happiness is we need to go to our domain provider and repoint that domain to our new IP address. The new IP address you'll find under websites and domains. And over here, this is the IP address of your new server. So make sure your new server resolves to this IP address. Well, obviously not this one, but your IP address. And that was it. Not that difficult after all. It's just a few steps you need to remember. Let's recap them all. So first of all, the good thing was we employed an entirely web-based workflow using your favorite web browser and it'll work on PC as well as Mac and Linux. And you didn't have to use any external clients all thanks to Plesk 11.5, very nice. We moved the WordPress website from server A to server B. And to do that, we set up a brand new WordPress instance on our server B, which was the destination server. Then we zipped up all files on our source server, except for the WP config file. Very important, I can't emphasize this enough. We also exported the database so that we have a local copy of it. 
And then we did the reverse. We then uploaded the extracted files onto the destination server and extracted them, overwriting any existing files. And we did the same with the database. Thanks to PHP My Admin, we've imported the database onto our source, sorry, onto our destination server, uh, replacing any of the tables that were there before. And that was it. We had to do all this because the Plesk Migration Manager did not allow us to bring an instance in from a server that does not allow root access with a password, but I hope this is a feature that will be coming in the next version of Plesk. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, don't hesitate to comment and share this video with friends, family, and random strangers. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.